Now, I had to do this video, man. I really did. Uh, and when you watch it, I can't wait to see the comments, man, because it's been booming all over. Usually, I don't get into the uh, fra tra tra of all the, the, the back and forth or sometimes uh, of, of Twitters and all those things. But this is a very, this, this is a very important topic. Uh, and it's about this Jumia story, man. Feel. As long as it's not going to kill you, it's going to make you what? Stronger. Now, first of all, I want to con uh, congratulate Junior. What they've been able to do going public uh in the in the in the stock exchange in the states it's 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 extremely difficult uh, you know it's not everybody's able to do the due diligence that goes with it for those who don't know it's it's crazy i don't even know the whole process but uh it doesn't happen often so for that congratulations they're in a very very challenging space i like the fact that um their platform is there to 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 support um small small SMEs that want to sell their products so obviously they're picking a lot of their model from Amazon which makes sense because they have a winning model and to do that in Africa man hey has to you guys man because it's extremely challenging you have to build the infrastructure you have to find partners in the logistical uh, uh, and space etc 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 so I always always give my hat to companies that are trying to do business in Africa with all the challenges but also challenges mean opportunity so saying that this is my issue this is my issue guys why are you branding yourself as an African you know uh, uh, company now it doesn't make sense to me and you're gonna watch this clip and it blows my mind how narrative get bought with no consequences and no back uh, checking, facts checking. Jumia operates in Africa, but your headquarters are in Germany and Dubai. Top executives are French. Your engineering talents in Portugal. Is it important to get technical talent in Africa to be more of a really African company as opposed to a European company? We are a completely African company. We operate exclusively in Africa. We have more than 5,000 employees in Africa. And as you point out, but those are the, the warehouses, reality, not the, the reality, engineers. the reality is, in Africa, there's not enough uh, development and developers, for example. And we know that, and we need to collectively, the startups and the VCs and everyone address that because everything should be in Africa. This is what we want, and it should be like this one day. We need to work on that. It's not going to happen overnight, but this is something we have to do for sure. Why that guy asked that question? Because that make perfect sense. You know, you're, you're, most of you investors, first of all, you have no African as a co-founder. Most of the founders and co-founders are Europeans. You know, the group level is structure in Europe. The all the IT and I, it's crazy to me when the person says, "Yes, there is a gap in software engineering." Absolutely, but not one, not two. Uh, uh, engineers, is there's a lot of new companies now that are doing business uh, that 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 um, are doing software development at a very high level uh, in Africa. They have their own IT team in Portugal, you know. And what really pain me, really pain me, is because you hire five thousand people in Africa that allow you to define yourself as an African entity, as an African business, at least one co-founder put somebody. Now, I don't know their board. Is there any African on their board? You know, it has to be something. It has to be something. You have the group level somewhere else. You have the whole development team somewhere else. Now, I love when they say, oh, well, 
Uh, it, you know, again, we, we, I'm not here to judge. I just want to make Jumia aware that that's going to be a PR nightmare. Because they mentioned that their goal is to bring all this in Africa. Hope somebody's going to hold them accountable on that. How long is going to take? You know, did, did they really need to 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 uh, to say all that that they're African uh, enterprise? They, they will still be a great story that they're doing business in Africa. They've achieved that milestone, and that will be it. You know, they they they're pursuing with all the challenges that happened. That would have been great story. You know, still, but the fact that you're trying to brand yourself as an African business, that to me is not good because you're lying. And I'm going to end with this because this is what, this is what the topic is everywhere. I'm, I'm going to end with this. Man. How many African entrepreneurs do we know that lost Close to a billion dollars. Close to a billion dollars. And still attract investors. And still are able to sell as a great company. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm for it. You know, innovation takes a long time. I've said it so many times. But we don't get the same treatment when we start an innovative company as Western, you know, Westerners that runs companies. And, you know, when we deal with investors, especially foreign investors, there's a treatment gap between when they deal with African entrepreneur and, and, and they deal well, Westerners. Um, I would say Western entrepreneur doing business in Africa. There's the gap. We are not treated the same. You know, when we deal with a, uh, uh, um, when, 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 when investors deal with local entrepreneurs or African entrepreneurs, we are supposed to turn a profit in less than a year or two. And trust me, I'm talking from experience. But they lost a billion dollars and they're the darling of the world. Yeah, man. We got a long way to go, guys. We got a long way to go. But uh, hey, I had to say something. I love, man, I would love to see some of the comments out there, man.